Best in educational programs. Watch University of North Carolina Television. Learning for a lifetime. This is WUNL-TV Channel 26 Winston-Salem, one of the 10 stations of the UNC-TV network. Broadcast of the McLaughlin Group is made possible in part by BB&T, with more than 400 banking locations in the Carolinas providing financial services to individuals and businesses. And by Wake Radiology, a comprehensive multi-site radiology practice in the Triangle area, saluting the 100th anniversary of radiology's discovery. From the nation's capital, the McLaughlin Group, an unrehearsed program presenting inside opinions and forecasts on major issues of the day. GE is proud to support the McLaughlin Group. From plastics to power generation, GE, we bring good things to life. Here's the host, John McLaughlin. Issue one, the Buchanan Revolt or Buchanalia. We are taking back our party. We're on the verge of taking it back as prelude to taking back our country. You watch the establishment. All the knights and barons will be riding into the castle, pulling up the drawbridge in a minute. Because they're coming. All the peasants are coming with pitchforks after them. Pat Buchanan turned the political world on its head last Tuesday by defeating Bob Dole in New Hampshire. Buchanan squeaked ahead of front-runner Dole with 27% of the vote. Dole, 26%. Alexander, third, 23%. Question, can Buchanan repeat New Hampshire? Freddie the Beetle Bond. John, count on it. The Buchanan wave has not crested yet. And, and look what he's running against. A weak field. Alexander, Lamar Alexander doesn't have anything to say. The Dole campaign, the joke about the Dole campaign is they've already made a movie of it dead man walking. Uh, Buchanan has a message. He's pro-life. He's nationalistic. And he's a great campaigner. He's fabulous. People come to his events and they laugh and they cry and they bond with him. What more do you want? Eleanor Cliff. Okay, he's figured out how to run a campaign without any money. He's got a, a fabulous message and he's entertaining. But he's going to win a couple of more times and then that's going to be the end of him. I'm going to take a deep breath and get through the Buchanan presidency just as I got through the, the Forbes presidency. It's called the Lamaze method of political journalism. <laughs> <laughs> Jack Jamon. Well, yeah, yeah, Pat can win as long as it's a multi-candidate field and you can win with a, um, a relatively small share of the vote. Once he gets isolated one-on-one -on -one against either Dole or Alexander, it's going to be one of those, he won't be able to win anymore. He still has negatives above 50. What he does have, which the others don't have, is a message. I mean, Dole's message is, I've been around a long time, I deserve it. Lamar's is, I could beat Clinton, but neither one of them has um, anything comparable to Pat's. Yeah. I, I agree with Jack. I mean, as long as he can get 27% and the rest of the field is, you know, getting 25 or 24 or something like that, he's the winner. He's the winner of a, of a plurality. Uh, and this can keep on going for, for a very long time. And Pat does, oh, yes, it can. It can keep on going until you hit, you run up against uh, some place that, uh, that, you know, that one of the others drops away. It can go on running for a couple of weeks. We, we're, we're, we're looking into a campaign of attrition here. Lamar Alexander's got to win somewhere or he's going to be gone. Okay, panic in the party. Buchanan's commanding insurgency has put Republicans in a tizzy. Dakota is. Dole and Alexander are splitting the vote of mainstream Republicans. That split, Republicans worry, will give Buchanan longevity right through to August San Diego Republican Convention. Buchanan wants both Alexander and Dole to stay in the hunt to the very end. What I'm going to do is to try and do everything that we can to uh, try to stop Pat Buchanan. Some of his message of uh, intolerance uh, troubled me, but it's just the beginning of a primary season. I have returned to the heartland of America to fight for the heart and soul of the Republican Party. And that's what this race is all about. The panic has led to denunciation. Former Reagan official Jack Kemp says Buchanan's victory was based on fear. And already Buchanan is making headlines around the world. Heil Buchanan, so says the Edinburgh Scotsman. A fascist bomb is how a Turkish newspaper describes Buchanan's arrival on the American election scene. 
I congratulate you as a comrade and brother in arms in the struggle for national liberation. So says Russian ultranationalist Vladimir Zhirinovsky in his greeting to brother in arms uh, Buchanan. Question, is the Republican, and for that matter, the global panic warranted on a clip? I don't think so. I mean, Buchanan would lose if he were one-on-one -on -one with almost anybody in this field, just as he lost against uh, George Bush. And as soon as uh, Lamar Alexander or Bob Dole absent themselves from the field, and I think it's going to be Alexander who goes, I think, you know, Dole is going to be the establishment uh, uh, a nominee. What the Republicans have to figure out, though, is how to kill the messenger without killing the message. He's bringing in uh, Democrats, people who should be Democrats, oh, and if the Republicans yeah, can figure out how to keep them, Jack, then they're in good position. All, all the, the, I mean, the point with, <coughs> with Pat now is that all the attacks on him by the establishment feed his message, nourish his, his supporters. It's their resentment of the establishment of the people in charge that is behind him and giving him impetus in the first place. Everything, everything that is said about Pat, they say, that's part of this, you know, cabal. Yeah. Look, but there is, there is a, a party there in the making, uh, which is isolationist, nativist, uh, sort of skinhead, you know, and it's, and it, yes, skinhead. He attracts the skinheads. I, I saw no skinheads at any Buchanan event What's in Iowa or Look, David Duke has not, did, not in, did not want to endorse him for nothing. And he was you know? repudiated by okay. What's the issue, What's Look, the issue Look, that gives Buchanan the biggest political traction and momentum? Well, trade, obviously. The trade, what about job, the, and security. The job yeah, issue. Uh, okay. Yeah. Regarding the job, job issue, how is it that Buchanan gets such mileage out of it when he has opposition as vocal and high profile as this? Patrick Buchanan is a racist. He's anti-Semitic. He bashes women's rights along with labor and immigrants. And he's a believer in supply-side economics. He was obviously going progressively to the worst terror of all. <laughs> all of those are equal racism and supply-side. All right, that's John Sweeney. He's the president of the AFL-CIO. He said he's a, sheep's in, uh, a wolf right. in sheep's clothing. What do you say about Well, because John Sweeney is scared that, like George Wallace, uh, uh, Pat Buchanan can come in and raid uh, Union territory. I mean, Pat Buchanan, the, the blue-collar, sort of angry uh, uh, guy who's been, who's fearing a layoff or a downsizing, might well go to Pat Buchanan. He's worried about a George Wallace. He's worried about another Ronald Reagan who will come into the election. Oh, Ellen, 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 Ellen. The Democrats, the Democrats, have, to be, the Democrats have to be careful in how they speak to this issue as well because they, they, they have to take the concerns of the people who Buchanan is speaking to seriously. But Buchanan is no friend of labor, and, and working people will find that out. He opposes a, a rise in the minimum wage. He probably opposes the minimum wage itself. He's opposed to striker replacement. He only discovered uh, uh, protectionism four years ago. He doesn't like ultra after rules George and regulations. George Bush embarrassed him by yeah, pointing but, 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 out he drives a, 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 a foreign-made car. That, that, that's, that's, uh, we, we've, had a, we've had an anomaly for the last uh, year. The, the number that politicians pay most attention to in polling is the country off on the wrong track? Usually that number goes down when the economy gets better. It stayed up. People are still insecure. What is it, around despite se good economic around figures. Around 70 percent. That means that people are scared to death. The economic insecurity is real. They're scared of, of not being laid off or of losing their jobs permanently. And yet, yeah, and yet, and yet the, 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 the polling shows that people feel that the financial condition is better today than it was four years ago. Yeah, yeah but they don't, but they don't, but they don't. They don't feel that they're safe. And they, re they pick up the paper, 40,000 jobs at AT&T. Well, Buchanan, Buchanan has seized on, on a real issue, but I don't hear any solutions. 10% or 20% surcharge on Japanese and Chinese uh, well, imports would only set is to hold up, a hearing. Yeah. You know. yeah. Well, yeah. Exit question. Bill Clinton Exit. has some solutions. On, a, prob long -term. About Clinton, no. We're talking about on a probability mm -hmm. scale of 0 to 10, 0 meaning 0 probability, 10 meaning metaphysical certitude. What's the probability that Pat Buchanan will be the nominee of the Republican Party? Freddie. Well, before New Hampshire, I would have, sh I would have said zero. Now I'd say between one and two. 0.25%. Uh. Yeah, something under one. Something under one. What? Two and a half. Ah, uh, two and a half is all right, Mark. <laughs> Issue two, the delegate hunt. 
The GOP presidential primary schedule is moving relentlessly towards the convention goal line. 1,990 delegates will attend the Republican Party's national convention starting Monday, August 12th, six months from now. To be nominated, a candidate must have one more than half of 1,990 or 996 delegates. Here are the next stops on the road to that delegate magic number. February 27, next Tuesday, three primaries. Arizona, 39 delegates. North Dakota, 18. South Dakota, 18. What's the outlook of these three primaries, Jack Jamon? Oh, I don't know about the Dakotas. The focus is all on Arizona. You can and probably will win it. I mean, he's on a roll. What do you think? Um, well, uh, Bob Dole ought to win, must win South Dakota. If he doesn't win South Dakota, it's all over for him. Uh, and uh, and and uh, North Dakota is is close. It's not it's not, not in the bag ballot, and it and, and so you, it's probably a lot of it before the Buchanan it, wave. Arizona's the important one. Dole made a mistake, I think, by not appearing in that debate. There should have gone. I, I disagree because uh, Forbes spent a lot of money on negative advertising in this state. I think uh, Dole has conceded it. Why battle it out and lose when he's going to lose anyway? It's a big anti-federal government state, and it's uh, very hard on immigration, right? Yep. That seems as though it's going to favor Buchanan, Absolutely. but possibly Dole. Also, Forbes has uh, rebounded <laughs> somewhat there. Okay, continuing the hunt, March 2nd, Saturday, South Carolina. 37 delegates. Question, how does it look? Jack Jamond, and how important is it? Well, it's less important than they claim in South Carolina. They keep talking about the gateway to the South. Again, I think this is a, um, a probably a Buchanan state. I don't think you get a, a real test until the 5th of March. And they, uh, yeah. Yeah. No, South Carolina... The, the dole, well, the dole people regard this as a firebreak. Right. They, they think that it's, that it's an, a very important event for them, which su suggests to me that they think they can win it, and, and therefore they, you know, they'll say it's yeah. must win. It's really an important event because of Lamar Alexander. This is his last chance. If he can't win in South Carolina, he's gone, and then Dole will get to go one-on-one uh, -on -one yeah, with that's Buchanan. That's not true. That's not true. The test Wait. for Alexander is going to come in the... Yankee primary of the five New England states with 107 delegates. Well, former Governor Carol Campbell saved George Bush in South Carolina four years ago. He hopes he's going to do the same for Dole. Okay, resuming the hunt for delegates. March 3, Sunday, Puerto Rico, 14 delegates. Two days later, March 5th, Mega or Junior Tuesday, eight states. Colorado, 27. Connecticut, 27. Georgia, 42. Maine, 15. Maryland, 32. Massachusetts, 37. Rhode Island, 16. Vermont, 12 delegates. Question, how does it look, Jack Jamon? Well, I, the, the, the key here is the five New England states with 100 and some delegates. This is, the, this is I think, the place where Alexander has to win to show he's viable. If he doesn't, his money will dry up, he'll be gone. The other state that's important there will be Georgia, just because of the number of delegates. Uh, uh, Georgia should be a good state for Dole, but it should be a good state for uh, Alexander. I, I think the key is Georgia. Whoever wins South Carolina is likely to win, win Georgia, and I think that's the one-two punch. The problem for Alexander is if he's not a factor in North and South Dakota, uh, uh, doesn't do well in Arizona, doesn't do well in South Carolina, he'll be out of it already. He won't be able to do anything in the New England state. Nobody, nobody in New England is going to know what happened in South Carolina because no, they don't care. They're going to know what happened. The fundraisers know. There, there he'll there be, be out of exactly, money. Exactly. There'll be a lot of momentum for, from the previous events. And, and this will be, this is Alexander's place, and if he doesn't win there, he's gone. Yeah, Alexander okay. is going to look like a spoiler if he doesn't win real soon. The hunt for delegates goes on. March 7, Thursday, New York, 102 delegates. Question, tell me about New York, Jack Jamon. Well, I mean, uh, Al D'Amato has wired New York for Dole. If, if, if Dole can't win New York, forget it. I mean, Forbes is well. now also in 31 districts. Mm -hmm. uh, Buchanan's in 12 districts. And Lamar is not in New York at all. Right. Right? Right. And, well, the, but there is a, a court challenge that Forbes is trying to knock over the, the whole system. And everybody, all the other candidates, Forbes is hoping is, to, to get is on the ballot as, yeah. as a right. result yeah. of that. Yeah. Yeah. If Bob Dole has got to win New York or he's, or he's finished. Although he we will. He'll win New York. Okay. New Continuing York. the hunt. Tuesday, March 12, the big one. Super Tuesday. Florida, 98 delegates. Mississippi, 33. Oklahoma, 38. Oregon, 23. Tennessee, 38. And get this, Texas, 123 delegates. What's the outlook? Start in, uh, with Florida and Texas, Jack Jamon. Well, Florida and Texas uh, uh, is where the th thing will be fought. Florida is a state where it gives all of us at-large delegates uh, winner-take-all to the statewide winner 
and then by CD. It is Alexander's best state in the South. If he is still alive at that point, he would have to win there. Texas is a state that requires 50 percent uh, winner take all to take all the delegates. Otherwise, to be apportioned by CDs. That could mean a very mixed result there. In the tabulation. The fact is, I think this thing is probably over before we get to this one. But yeah. if you it mean is, this is the Alexander's end. out by then? Alexander or Dole. Or Dole? Yeah, I, yeah I, I suppose so. I mean, there's one final, well down the line, you get, in, sometime in April, you get to, to Pennsylvania where Alexander is not even on the ballot. Um, and and that if if no, no other place will blow him out. Yeah, Pat, it doesn't Pat, matter. He doesn't have delegates. Pat, you get delegates later. Pat Buchanan will stop hearing "Hail to the Chief" in the middle of the night by March 12th. Which yeah, alley, right? His, uh, yeah, the, I agree. The Buchanan wave will have crested by then, and uh, and so Dole should do well on Super Tuesday. If, You're predicting Dole in Florida? Yeah. They're yeah. predicting Dole in Texas. Absolutely. Same here. Uh, what is our, the real Alexander? Is he the moderate bushy? Or well, is he the radical that wants to eliminate the Department of Education, Mort? Well, not radical. He's got his positions are are very radical. He wants to basically uh, devolve Congress. I mean, uh, wipe Congress away. Have have members of Congress be here only six months a year. <coughs> uh, therefore, having the presidency completely overbalance the Congress, completely do away with uh, uh, federal welfare system, and not only devolve it to states and cities, but to, to neighborhoods which could mean that in, in Harlem, for example, Al Sharpton his, will run the his, welfare system. His positions, Great idea there, his Omar. His positions <laughs> are not only half-baked, they're still dough. They have not <laughs> been thought out at all. Is the press, does the press think that Alexander is a fraud? <coughs> yes. Um, yes, I think a lot of reporters think that he's a fraud. Way all to this put is it. made up. Compared to who? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, come on. Compared to Joel. You start talking about frauds. My God, I'm not going to start sorting out who's the biggest fraud in right. politics. Well, that's, that's ridiculous. Well, that's look, the fact right. is, he's had a campaign of gimmicks, though, and he's he's gone too far. He's still spinning. Has he Buchanan, needs to win has Buchanan spinning. changed since all of this fame and attention has fallen upon him? Is he different in any way? I think I think something important happened to Pat Buchanan in New Hampshire in 1992 when he discovered that it's possible for people to be out of jobs through no fault of their own, at least white people. Yeah. He, he so finally that's figured out the that they developed some sympathy for a them. A conservatism of compassion. Mm -hmm. Of the heart. As of the heart. It. Yeah, it sounds a lot like liberalism, though. That's the problem. Uh, so yeah. you don't yeah. think he's changed? Yeah. No, I think he has changed. He's all almost corporate giddy bashing with and right. all this, uh, then he's, protectionism he's, he's, he's and industrial more, policy. He's it's even nonsense. more giddy than when he kept the Uzi and the rosary beads under that chair. <laughs> <laughs> uh, exit question. At what point was ma will mathematical lock, will ma mathematical certitude take over and we will have a Republican nominee in the primary chain, I ask you, Freddie, and if it does occur, who will that person be? Probably Bob Dole, probably March 26th, the day of the California primary. After uh, Super Tuesday, Eleanor. Fred has lurched uncontrollably into the truth. That was controllable. <laughs> what do you think, Jack? Uh, uh, nobody's gonna get nine, nobody will get 996 that soon. The, it's very difficult. It'll be sometime in April. So this game is gonna, it's gonna be played late in the game, the, the, the decision, right? Yep, I've st I've said Dole for you know for years. Um, you know, I I just I was just thinking about uh, all those years when McGovern. Everybody said McGovern couldn't possibly win. You know, well this is could be one of those years, but I still think it's going to be Dole. I think the Republicans are going to dry up Lamar's money because Dole can't win with Lamar in, and they've got to go for either Lamar or Dole, and they can dry up his money through the governors perhaps. If that's the case then uh, I think it could go to, uh, what was the date Dole. you said? March 26th. Yeah, I'd say the end of March, the early part of April. <laughs> Issue three. If it ain't brokered, you can't fix it. The 1996 Republican Convention was supposed to be Bob Dole's coronation. But instead of a one-ballot nomination for Dole, at the GOP convention in San Diego, a possible, even likely, ongoing primary chaos this year could mean a brokered convention for the first time since 1952. A brokered convention occurs when no candidate enters the convention with a clear majority. Then, multiple viable candidates and their power brokers 
can try to lure delegates from their opponents. In smoke-free, smoke-filled rooms, these party bosses exchange favors, bargains, make promises in exchange for votes. A vice presidency here, a cabinet position there, or a favorite plank in the platform. In 1952, it took three heavily broken ballots to nominate Adlai Stevenson. This August, the ingredient for throwing open the convention may be falling into place. Bob Dole's loss of front-runner status, Pat Buchanan's surprise and ongoing surges, and Lamar Alexander's tenacious overall third-place positioning. What circumstances or conditions have to be in place for the convention to become brokered, Mort Kondracki? Oh, you'd, ha you'd have to have all of the candidates staying in. You mean the three principles? The, the three, well, and Forbes, too. I mean, you'd want to divide this thing up. The more, uh, the merrier, but yeah. you've got to have a minimum you've of got three. At least three, and they've all got to, they've all got to stay funded, and, and, uh, and nobody gets a, nobody gets a, a plurality of the, de a majority of the delegates. Then you go into the convention. I would think that in a situation like that, the old-time Paul Dole would win because these are most of the delegates presumably will be you know experienced Pauls like himself and that he should be uh, delivered the nomination. Well, how you do it? The guy who's in first, probably Dole with the most delegates, makes a deal with one of the other people in second or third, says you can be my running mate. And that's Hello, it. everybody. Yeah, seventy-two percent of the delegates will be decided by the end of March, so a broken convention is highly unlikely. If it happens, Fred's right. Then we've got a, probably a Dole Alexander ticket or flip-flop. I doubt flip-flop, though. Every four years, people don't understand American politics <laughs> talk about a broken convention. It never happens. It's not going to happen this time. What's, well, let's get out with that. Exit question. What's the likelihood on a zero to ten scale, zero, zero probability, ten certitude? Freddie? Zero. Zero. That's right. Even less than Buchanan becoming the nominee. Zero. Jack, yeah, zero. I buy that. Mort, zero. Zero. Answer, zero. Issue four, HIV, Eve Ill Volunteers. If there are a pilot, a helicopter pilot on a ship, a sub, or in a tank, or in an artillery unit, or a paratrooper, or special forces, they are given a safe job in the States, never to be deployed again. Did I hear you That's that? what GOP presidential candidate Robert Dornan of California wants to do with military service men and service women testing HIV positive. Dornan believes military personnel with the AIDS virus impair the readiness of U.S. armed forces. Impaired readiness, says Dornan, means this. Under current military policy, HIV-positive service members cannot be deployed in combat or perform certain other duties. This means that that combat and those certain other duties must be taken over by other personnel. Thus, military readiness is interfered with. It's delayed. President Clinton does not agree with Dornan. Yet he signed a defense bill that contains a provision that military personnel testing positive for the AIDS virus must be dismissed within six months. The president signed the bill because he wants and needs a defense fund. Mr. Clinton has vowed, however, to work with Congress to repeal the provision which he calls, quote-unquote, blatantly discriminatory. Under the new law, the discharged HIV-infected soldiers will receive full medical benefits, but no disability pay, no medical benefits for spouses and children, and no retraining for the discharged surface personnel themselves. Question, is President Clinton right? Should U.S. public policy permit servicemen and servicewomen testing HIV positive to serve in the armed forces. Eleanor Cliff. Uh, absolutely. I mean, we've learned a lot more about AIDS. People can live for a, a, lo a long time and they can be fully functional. It's not transmittable uh, in any kind of casual way. What Bob Dornan has done to attach this is totally reprehensible. It will be overturned in the courts. Jack, you wouldn't have this kind of an issue if there weren't cameras. I mean, Bob Dornan, nobody's going to take Bob Dornan seriously. Newspapers are too smart to do that. But you know, we, now you put him on the, again. He's got a bill. You know, he's got a bill. He, so he's got a bill. They've all got Stop bills. The ducks. <laughs> I mean, the Congress is going to vote on this. Oh, the Congress will repeal it. I mean, there's been, now that there's been enough 
uh, backlash against this thing, it, it'll be taken out. And, you know, the thing is that, that uh, when a person actually gets sick, that's the time to give them a medical discharge while they're just suffering from the virus. Yeah, right? and, and there is a discrimination problem. I mean, there are lots of people in the service who get sick and can't serve in combat. If you're going to throw all of them out, including the HIV positive people, that's fine. But if you're not only going to throw the HIV positive people out, that's unfair. Predictions, Beetle. Uh, the Dole campaign will make overtures to the Buchanan campaign so they can cool the rhetoric and make sure that if Dole gets the nomination that uh, Pat Buchanan and his followers won't bolt. Eleanor. Uh, the Clinton administration will impose targeted sanctions against China, not for trade abuses, but for funneling nuclear-type materials to Pakistan. Jack, this um, front-loaded process of delegate selection has been such a disaster is for the Republicans so far, and per perhaps worse, is such that I suspect they'll change it next time and spread the primaries out some. This Ward, is, this Ward, no prediction from you. I'm sorry. We've already got your prediction. Take a look. More time. Pat Buchanan will run for president uh, one of these years as the leader of the conservative movement. Oh, come on. Yeah, right. Serious. <laughs> it's true. What do you think of that? Uh, listen, prescient. Stumbled into the May truth again. May the 18th, 1990, <laughs> 18 months before what, he ran the first time. What can I say, John? Even Just Pat didn't know he was running then. <laughs> My prediction is that this was beginner's luck on the part of Mort, and it will not be repeated. Next week, who will the Republicans throw over the side? Dole or Alexander? Bye-bye. GE is proud to support the McLaughlin Group. From plastics, generation. GE. We bring good things to life. For a transcript, send five dollars to Federal News Service. 620 National Press Building, Washington, D.C. 20045. Specify program date. To obtain a free McLaughlin Group Viewer's Guide, write Viewer's Guide, Box 786, Madison Square Station, New York, New York, 10159. Topics are selected by Mr. McLaughlin, and the opinions expressed are solely those of the participants. Broadcast of the McLaughlin Group is made possible in part by BB&T, with more than 400 banking locations in the Carolinas providing financial services to individuals and businesses, and by Wake Radiology, applying science and technology to health care through 15 office and hospital locations in five counties. Wake Radiology is proud to support public television in North Carolina.